we have been sitting here having one of our many conversations as you guys know and today we were talking about we're talking about having a two income household yep we are a two income household uh, we both work mm -hmm. but since we've been abroad we actually were wondering yeah we're wondering if we even need to be a two income household um the moving abroad solved that problem does that mean i can retire <laughs> It is Bobby with Aging Grateful and I'm Cedric and today <laughs> <laughs> as you can see we love having conversations right this is some of the things that we do uh, we hope it helps you guys when we have these conversations um, it's just things in our head we're here to help as you were saying yeah just uh, we're, we're, we like to give ideas on things that may help people move abroad faster if that's your goal to move abroad faster that's what we try to do we say we look at some things we did and tips we have and things we learn and or, try to share or things we even thinking, thinking about. about absolutely so, so today yeah. we were talking about two income households right can moving abroad solve uh that problem again we're talking to people or couples that are maybe looking to to actually uh, down size to one income right, right 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 so what does that mean it just means um you know in america we like we said in the beginning we're pretty much everybody's pretty much working i mean dual income households have been it's just a, it's just the norm now almost listen the statistics that we had uh looked at were somewhere between 51 to 53 percent of households are two income households right. in the United States. Oh my God, that just like blew me away when I saw that research, right? right? right. And the, we'll link below the information to where we saw that <laughs> statistical data. Yeah, so as you know, we watch YouTube videos and, and talk to people and, and look at all kinds of stuff. You know, the conversation, there's a lot of conversation around, you know, what are people gonna do when they move abroad or how can they get there or where are they gonna work? Because that's the the big thing is where are they gonna work. Yes. And and a lot of people think that, you know, you may need both income. So now we gotta look for two jobs, you know, to be able to work remotely mm -hmm. from. And that, that may not be Yeah, case. that may not necessarily be the case. Absolutely. Because um, a lot of these places you can live pretty at a pretty that's affordable decent. Right. Yeah. yeah. So as an example, um, if you guys are thinking about it, have the tough conversation with your uh, spouse or partner yes. um, about really what are the expectations? I mean, this is a hard conversation yeah, to hard have. Conversation. Oh, my God. It's a hard, hard conversation to have. What are the expectations um, going forward uh, with one of the spouses or partners not working? Right. Right. So you got to look at that. Because you think of like, um, especially if you have somebody that's been working, like two people have been working forever, right? Yes. What are the expectations? Are you expected to work for? Forever? Well, not forever, <laughs> but you know what I mean. Are you expected to? Are you expected to work, or are you expected to come? What do you want to do? Right. That's. I guess that's a that's even a, more of a beginning. Ooh, that's what, a deep question. What do you want to do? So, as an example. Um, with us, right? Um, is I, I can only speak for me as a as a wife here. Um, I was raised working, right, since I was a teenager and stuff. And to stop working or not working, um, I want I wanted to feel like I was still contributing, or that contributing to me was that we both work, right? And knowing realistically that we contribute to the household in many different ways and we right. and we um there's value in us being a husband and wife right and right. um so we had to dig deeper on that there's deeper layers but we're using that as an example um so tough questions tough conversations but they need to be had yeah. before you move abroad they definitely need to be had before okay. you move abroad so here's another thing 
what if you are expected to work right you come you guys have come to this uh conversation and you're somebody or both of you come to it that yeah we do have to work then why yeah why that's that's the question i would ask is why why do you feel like like we still need to income yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, <laughs> so that, that's not how that conversation went. No, but. no. That's not how the conversation went. Seriously. That's not how the conversation worked. But you know uh, what? What You have to be real. I mean, you have yeah, to be honest. You have how, to get down. That's how it's going to go in somebody's house. It might you. go like that for real in somebody's house. But no, I mean, seriously, the, the factor is break it down to its lowest common denominator of why you feel like you need to continue to work if you're okay living with a one income in another area, right? Right. So you have to look at that. Um, are there what things there, you could do you, to mitigate that or cut down on cut it? Cut down on those expenses. Yeah, like um, uh, what an example is. Maybe it, you don't need a two bedroom. Maybe you don't need you know. There's all two kinds cars. of things. two cars. Maybe there's maybe you don't need a vehicle. Well, first of all, you may not need a vehicle at all. Correct. So um, that can cut down on some things. Um, downsizing. Um, we're used to in the U.S. having big houses, lots of rooms, and stuff like that. Huge backyards. Yeah. And things like so that. So downsizing, you may, you'd be surprised at, at what what that looks like and. And how, what you can say. The man of cutting down. Oh, okay, so listen. Let me let me say something. My husband and I have this thing, right? I was thinking, and, and likely most people too, right? Oh, you might need two or three bedrooms. I need an office. I need an office, right? But realistically, do you? Can you make do? Yeah, people live in studio loft. Apartments downtown, Chicago, Arizona, L.A. all day long. And pay groups of money. Big money. money. Yeah. I mean, but realistically, ask yourself these things. Are there things that you can do or there's things that may not be necessary to your experience that cost, that may be able to cut the cost down, right? Right. So you got to ask yourself that. In our case, we had two vehicles in the States. No vehicles. So yeah. that was an expense that we didn't need. A lot of times we are looking at this situation. The right now. The right as of where we are. This picture outlook of right. what our expenses are right now. And what we've been used to. Right. And those expenses may not be the same expenses in another country. Right. right. So that's that. Um, what's another thing? Um, it could be time for the... The non-working person <laughs> to focus on a side hustle. A I mean, side, yeah. to use that time to focus on some side hustle, something that they like doing yes. that may bring in some, you know, some income. It doesn't have to be a lot of income, but yeah. enough to maybe help out with the expenses, right, that are going forward. This might be a perfect time for someone to really hone in on focusing on what they love to do. Right. Something that um, that they enjoy. And maybe finding some new loves or passions about things that you didn't know you had or wanted to explore but didn't have the time to do so, where it might actually produce some, some income. income. Yeah, and I, and I wouldn't say so much as, for, as far as helping out expenses. I would just say to bring some extra money. Maybe you want to travel some places or maybe you want to do some things. And that could be help. Maybe you want to do juicer. I mean, you know. Yeah. Anything. So you know. Anything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know anything. <laughs> so I mean, yes, yeah, side hustle, and that side hustle could maybe even lead to something. Yeah. It's a, a a main hustle at some point, but yeah, absolutely. So you know, one thing to consider though, when you guys are having those conversations about side hustles, keep in mind that the side hustle is not supposed to take care of the or may not take care of the all the expenses and, and living uh, costs in the property. It is may just bring in a little bit. So don't get discouraged by it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's not what a side hustle you're saying. Now I'm going to do a side hustle and I'm going to go do yoga and I'm going to make you know, $70,000 doing yoga. No, that might not, not, may not be the case. You might be starting out with donations, <laughs> you know, a side hustle. Get them 50 pesos for like, you know, three tacos. 
know. Hey, that's three tacos you have to pay for. Three tacos, 55 pesos. <laughs> but I'm just saying, you know, give yourself some slack on the side hustle thing. It is definitely that. It's a side hustle. And it may actually be more later on. But yeah. don't get dis discouraged. And then I think that the, the thing about that is, you know, focusing your time on something that you can build for yourself. Absolutely. Instead of trading it for somebody else's, somebody else's business. Yeah. Absolutely. That'd be two. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Which leads us to some re a really great tip here. Um, and we roll all this down because our minds squirrel. We'll be all over Yes. Shit. And they still squirrel with the writing it down. Absolutely. Anyway, so. so what we are um, recommending is, is that now that you guys have had the conversation, right, you need to put some action behind it and come up with one or two pre-budget scenarios. We like to call them demo budgets, okay? Um, and you take those budgets based upon what you feel it would look like while living abroad. You can use such sites uh, like Nimbio um, as an example. I think it's called Nimbio. I think so. Uh, as an example, we'll put the information below where you can actually do a cost of living analysis for some of the places that you are wanting to potentially live abroad. Yeah. This gives you, and, and those sites are really, really good, right? Yeah, they're really detailed too. So you can really play around with the numbers and the things on that and customize it to what the lifestyle that you want to live right. in those places. You want to live high on the hog or just getting by, living a modest um, lifestyle. It goes and fluctuates with that. They even calculate things like potentially like food yep. and utilities. And, and things of that nature so you know that way you can kind of you know get somewhat of a feel of if a one income what one income could work right in right. the place that you're choosing right, right? And, those, and those sites are pretty accurate yes. uh, we've looked at them quite a few times and they're they're pretty they're pretty, pretty spot, spot on, on. Yeah, absolutely pretty spot on. another thing about it though when you're doing the, these budgets Make sure you guys are real with yourself. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, don't sit here and say, oh, my gosh, I could live under a rock. Uh, <laughs> you know, no. <laughs> you b please be honest with what you can and cannot live with and without, right? Yeah. And sometimes, and I'll just say it, sometimes you may think that you can, that you can live without something until you actually are in that spot and you be like you know what i thought i could live without this but this ain't gonna work mm -hmm. but real be realistic but, but, yeah be but realistic. each each party needs to come with with each other's needs yeah. you know you need to come with your your needs and say what is the non-negotiables here when you're building a budget okay yeah. and so, don't and, and i would say on top of that i wouldn't compromise on the non-negotiables because of price because you're going to end up spending more money to to rectify that after you get into the place that you skimped out on because Absolutely. you thought you could do it so so learn from us <laughs> learn from us here's a here's an example here's an example because I'm, I'm just gonna say nothing actually messes up a budget like things you thought you could live without that you now realize that you can't i had to write that down because i that was that was good do you understand me? <laughs> Nothing messes up a budget like things you thought you could live without that you now realize you can't. Yeah. What's a great example of that, babe? What's a great example of that? AC? Oh! Uh, <laughs> <laughs> did we think we could live without AC? Yeah, we did. Uh, don't, yeah, don't, we don't, did. Don't, we got sucked <laughs> in. Listen, it, when you go to these places, especially if you're going in a in the high season or peak season or whatever when the weather is, is beautiful is beautiful you can get away without ac and then people there locally they may not have ac at all they may not use ac um but think about it they're local they've been acclimated to this climate wherever you are so they may not it may not bother them whatsoever and we thought we was local students. <laughs> <laughs> and it was good. It was good. It was good. Until. It wasn't. <laughs> this is the hottest year on record that we know of. And believe me, we felt every bit of it coming in. Right? right. And we were like, oh, we can do this. 
We gonna compromise. What to do? And then we even talk to the talk to the neighbors in the building. It's like, oh, it's not bad. You should uh, put on a fan. You do this. You do that. They lied, and I rebuke every last Listen. one of them. It was hot. Yeah, okay. it, it's it's hot, and you gonna spend whatever little savings or whatever you can to get out of that situation. I promise you, you ain't <laughs> yeah. gonna care. It's gonna be like spare no expense. Listen, <laughs> well, we're saying this. We're laughing now, but realistically. You want to make sure that that because it, it was supposed to be a non-negotiable, right? And it became negotiable because uh, you start looking at these prices. Yes, the prices. Yes, and so we realize now that you can actually mess up your budget because you say, okay, this is the budget we got. This is what we sticking to. We're gonna be able to save this amount of money, but reality is, is that we should have left it as a non-negotiable. Um, with the option to turn it off if we needed to, right. <laughs> to turn it off. And so, please, that, that was a non-negotiable. Another thing that you feel like is not a non-negotiable that we realized was non-negotiable for you. What's that? The, um, a TV. Here we go. So, first of all... Can y'all see what I'm saying? <laughs> okay. All right. Go ahead. So, the TV was actually not that big of a problem. I'm, I'm, I'm going to say I'm not really a TV person. I, I like to watch TV, but I'm, I don't sit and just watch TV and watch TV and watch TV and watch TV, right? So let me tell you what had happened. So what had, what had happened was we had an iPad, right? And we was watching this iPad. TV on fine. the iPad. TV on the iPad, just fine. No problems at all. So then we went over to some friend's house who had a nice big TV, and I'm sitting over there like, man, I've, I don't know how much I miss looking at a TV a screen. Regular TV a, screen. Re a regular TV screen. And then we went on a vacation somewhere, and they had TVs, and I'm like, man, this is like, I might go blind watching this iPad. <laughs> you know, I might need bifocals by the time we finish with this iPad. <laughs> but here's the thing. It was something that was in our budget. Listen right. to listen to us. Right. It was something in our budget that we did budget for that we said we could do without. Right. Okay, so it's not, look, we're not saying we follow in the Joneses or anything like that. It was something we legitimately had budgeted for. We said it was not, it was non-negotiable and then it became a negotiable. And we sitting there looking at this iPad like this in the, and and it shouldn't have been a non-negotiable. Nah, yeah, it shouldn't have been. It was, yeah, yeah. I mean, it shouldn't have been a negotiable. <laughs> it shouldn't have been a negotiable. So he got his TV is what he's basically yeah. saying. But what happened was is that we curbed it, the budget early on to do without it now that we considered it a non-negotiable. Right. And it wound up busting our budget um, at some point because of that. That's what we're saying, basically. Another thing, too, um, is a non-negotiable is a lot of these countries, it's popular to have an open living, uh, open air living, especially if it's a nice climate, um, and maybe just the bedrooms are closed Close off, off with AC. Correct. So basically, your living room and all that stuff's kind of open to, to the, the elements, elements and stuff like that, like Earth, Wind, and Fire. Yeah. And and, and and it's nice. It is very beautiful. It's nice, but listen, them mosquitoes and ants and birds. And everything. If you're not an outdoor person, yeah, that is not going to be the life for you. And you know, you may you. And the thing about it is, you get caught up in these in these non-negotiables that turn negotiables when you start looking at these rent prices. Like, oh man, I, you know, if rent's going to be that. Oh, I can. We can. Go, we can live open there. It's nice anyway. Mm -mm. It's just just stick to your gut. <laughs> just stick to stick your, your non-negotiables. Yeah, stick to your yeah, stick to your non-negotiables. Because um, it's easier once you have something. Especially if you've budgeted it. Right. It's easier to have something that you has as a non-negotiable and realize that it could have been a negotiable at your budget. Right, exactly. So that I, yeah, I just it's, say it's that. It's definitely because you're definitely gonna spend more money going back trying to fix that Absolutely. Uh, non-negotiable. And my husband's favorite thing to talk about he's about to get on his soapbox what's that is vacation versus living mode when people Ooh. come to visit you 
That can blow your budget. Oh! Out of the water. Can I get an amen? That will blow, that can blow your budget can. out of the water. You have to plan for that. Um, because people on vacation want to go and do vacation things. Everywhere. They want to go eat at all the restaurants every night. Do all the tours. All the tours. They Everything. Everything. And, and they're staying in these hotels, so they're eating out every day, and they want you to come along for the fun. Yes. And my husband's a firm believer of, nope. Yeah. <laughs> He's a firm believer. I mean, we, we now we do budget for entertainment and Absolutely. stuff like that. And there's times, and there may be times where you say, you know, I'm going to take some of my food help. budget. Absolutely. And, you know, you do all that. But in general, it can really blow your budget out of water. And and then being somewhere and living like you're on vacation. And, and usually... Um, I call it probably the two to three, maybe even four month jitters. Yes. Where it's just like it's all new and it's so affordable that you think, oh, I can just go here. Oh, man, this is only, you know, 50 pesos for this and 50 pesos for that. That stuff starts adding Add up, up Absolutely. quick. It starts adding up quick. Or anywhere, anywhere that you feel is comfortable uh, or reasonably priced, you tend to laugh a little bit because of that and right. then go on this uh, I want to order everything on the menu yeah, because I exploration gotta, yeah, yeah that's what we call it we, we go and exploring all these menus at the restaurants yes. and, and all these things um, but that that is probably the biggest thing yes. you first get to a place you go you do tours you do whatever you do typically when you're um, vacationing it will just eat your budget Alive. One thousand percent. It will eat it alive. Also, with regards to having one income, you may be able to get away with living in a space that is smaller. Um, I, again, my husband's so boxy is. We were the, thinking about two bedrooms, or we have people who we know who are looking at two bedrooms, and there's they're a couple. And you say, well, I'm doing that because just in case we have company come right. visit. My husband's thing is, look, unless the company is shipping in right. on this here living expenses. This is what I say. This this is my philosophy. Oh, let's just here say, we go. Let's just say you pan, there's a, a place for $1,200 a month for a two-bedroom. And you can find a place for 900 or 800 for a one-bedroom. Take that extra four or five hundred dollars. That's, that's just as nice. That's just as nice. Take that extra four or five hundred dollars, put it in a savings account. Or investment. An investment account. And save it. And then guess what? Whenever somebody comes to visit, which is hardly ever, but if they just uh, so happen to. Is that hardly show, ever? Because you just said they come to just, visit. Well they people say that all the time, but the reality I'm talking the rea because normally the reality of that is not is few far fewer in between. It's maybe two times a year if if you're lucky, right? But Take that money, put it up, and then when they come into town, if you want to be nice, get them a hotel room. You've already saved that. Well, she ain't doing either. That money. He's so. not doing either. <laughs> just saying somebody just, could. Just so we clear. Somebody could. Uh, so just save that money in an investment account. How yeah. about that? That's just, yeah, just save that money because chances we'll are an investment account. It, it's a good way to save money because as you get to living, you will realize that it's just it's just wasted space. You, you don't need it. Yeah. It's just wasted space. So, uh, I'll go on record and say it, it's going to be wasted space. It's going to be wasted space. Yeah. Okay. So, one other thing we want to leave you with, too, is that savings, since we're talking about saving, should be a necessary component in your budget. Yeah. That should be a true non-negotiable. Yes. You should, especially if you are going to be moving abroad, you need to include that savings constantly in your budget. In your budget. Yeah. If you got your budget planned out to the dollar and savings is not one of those options on there, yeah. boo, you have not finished yeah. your budget. Because if you think that, like say, for instance, you build some emergency fund, like, well, we'll just won't include savings in our budget because we've got this emergency fund sitting over here. No, 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 no. Emergency funds for emergencies. Emergencies, right. right. No, you need savings. It should be included in your budget. Please, please, guys, do not overlook this. I don't care the dollar amount, right? We we don't care the amount. No matter how small it is, it's going to be beneficial to you guys to do that. Because emergencies, I mean, they can happen. 
and having a cushion can make it yeah, it, make it can you stay it. on budget. Because especially <laughs> like with this, you know, summer's been the hottest all over the planet. And it seems like this year, everybody's talking about the electric bills being yes. sky high, unexpectedly. Yes, and don't think, you come up, wake up call. Listen, abroad, they, you, they do things different. You don't know everything about a country. I don't care how much research how you YouTube have done. And... I don't care if you've spoken to people who have lived here for 25, 35 years your experience is going to be different right? right and you need to try to prepare as much as you can for the unexpected right, right. so especially if you don't you've not been here before electric bills and I'm, I'm talking just across the board because even in the yeah, u.s yeah. are pricey okay and pricey is right you know is a relative. What is it? relative to you know each individual person but just know utilities can vary in right. any capacity yeah. up or down we and all use it. and i say i said this in the in, in the u.s it's like everybody uses we could we could have three different families in the same house and the bills will be totally different because everybody uses electricity different everybody uses electricity different. so just don't take people's word for it and say oh i, I was living in this building for a year and it was this amount yeah. oh uh, yeah don't, don't do that listen. um and and the other thing too is when your bill come and they put it on the door which is what they do especially here so it, i yeah. don't know how it's just know where you are they, how it works they but put it on the door so if it blow away that's not their fault but when they say due it don't mean you got 30 more days it means it is due today <laughs> and extensions and all of that stuff if think you, about it yeah. you're, you're in a, a, another country that you probably don't speak the language fluid so you think you're gonna just go down and have this conversation about some bill you can't pay yeah so you don't you don't what we're saying is is that just do your due diligence and make sure you have savings yes set aside for the just in case and and we understand emergency fund we got that we're good but you know you should always be saving something you should always be saving saving something so that to us is very important and we pray it's important to you guys yeah. um moving so i mean what do you what do you think oh I, I, I think we said all that to say that um if you're moving abroad and you're discussing your income situation you might be able to get away with just one income, which can speed up your timeline for moving abroad. Absolutely, because you may not need those two income anymore to make it work for you guys to live the life of your dreams um, abroad, right? Yeah. Right. Now, what do you guys think? Share your comments, ask questions. We love, love, love to comment and respond. You can also do us a favor and like and subscribe and comment yep. and hit that notification button. Yep. Yeah. Until the next time. Yep. See you later.